Um, his history was brought up uh, alcohol possession when he was underage. At that time, it was the crime of being young. Uh, possession of paraphernalia, um, a victimless activity, uh, skateboarding. I mean, there's the discussion of jail time is coming into play here, and, and the prosecutor is discussing the fact that he sometimes skateboards downtown. Um, this, this, uh, the matter of the contact, the no contact orders themselves go to the heart of whether or not Mr. Colson was even able to enjoy the downtown. While the no contact orders hung over his head, he was pretty much prohibited from being downtown, as Mr. Yuhas testified. Um, within the space of uh, about 50 feet is across the street. So you have to be more than out of eyesight in order to be within compliance of these no contact orders. Essentially, Mr. Colson was prohibited from being downtown between the hours of 9 and 5. But again, as it came out during the trial, he never, or it was implied during the trial, he never asked to have relief from that order. He never, he never came to court and, and said, that, you know, Judge, I've got, you know, I can't go downtown. I'll, I'll agree to stay on the other side of the street, but I, don't, I think that's too restrictive on my, on my movements. He never asked for that, did he? Um, I don't believe he had. We also have heard today about how um, this case involves many, all of the uh, witnesses brought into uh, court today. Um, they're closely associated with one another. They work for the King Police. Um, they have personal relationships with one another, and it also creates an, an environment uh, that encourages uh, ex extra legal privileges to be offered. And in this case, the defense feels that an extra legal privilege was offered in the conditions of this no contact order. Um, Mr. Gibbons had sought legal remedies to remove Mr. Colson from a pro uh, certain proximity of himself on more than one occasion previously to this uh, incident. And it is demonstrated in that uh, Officer Juhas, who was friends with that individual, um, was able to secure no contact orders, um, despite in this case that Mr. Colson never presented any sort of threat to the witnesses in this case. It, essentially what he was, uh, what he was given um, bail conditions concerning was whether or not he was in, in public, whether or not he was standing in public in the Central Square. Um, the court has since ruled that's not a crime. I believe it would be um, it would be an infraction upon Mr. Colson's rights to continue to uh, punish him for the nonviolent action he took of occupying a space uh, occupying space in Central Square, which is everyone's right here in King. Um, and it's it's unfortunate that it's come to this point. Now, in addition to the state uh, seeking sentence, they're also seeking further no contact orders between. Mr. Colson and um, the witnesses in this case. It doesn't seem necessary in the sense that those uh, two individuals have been in public recently. There has not been any issue. Um, even though they have had what Mr. Gibbons describes as a rocky relationship, uh, Mr. Colson has never been a physical threat to uh, the defendant, and, I mean, to, to the witness. And um, the witness, though he has made state statements that could be perceived as threatening of Mr. Colson, and in fact, did encourage um, the threats of others and public statements that Mr. Gibbons made on Facebook. Um, Mr. Colson has not has not responded with uh, with animosity or with anger at, at, uh, himself. Um, Mr. Colson should not be punished for not have had any the legal know-how or the resources to have challenged this sort of unnecessary order earlier. Um, and I would hope that the court recognizes in this case that. Putting Mr. Colson in jail over this sort of uh, sort of what you best call a disagreement um, would be an, an improper use of resources. Um, the purpose of the jail primarily should be to incapacitate dangerous people from society. It isn't as though when you send people to jail that they learn something they didn't learn before. They're just made to be dependent, and it's very unfortunate. And Mr. Colson is not somebody that needs to be made dependent upon the state. The state has had him in their custody uh, enough as he was growing up, and through all of the infractions that are relatively minor, as, as Ms. Kellum brought out, um, that definitely don't warrant jail time. Um, and I don't believe that, and uh, the defense uh, does not believe that uh, jail is an appropriate remedy for this case. Anything else? I'll just add that I think the defense's argument just runs from support for the state's position that he, he just painted Mr. Colson as a victim. He hasn't shown any um, sense of responsibility for his actions, namely violating orders of the court. I think um, 
who just, like I said, painted himself as a victim. I think that lends further support that he thinks that rules and orders and laws just simply don't apply to him. I think a message should be sent here. All right, I've been reviewing the earlier files. Uh, to some extent, I, I agree with the uh, defendant and some of the prior charges against Mr. Colson are relatively insignificant for sentencing purposes, and I won't, won't, uh, I'm not going to consider them. However, on the motions to impose on the suspended sentences, all I have to determine here is whether the defendant violated the trust, that is, if he failed to be of good behavior, uh, based on uh, future conduct. Uh, and the uh, evidence today was, was uh, convincing in that respect. what the motion uh, suspended sentences are all about. You can, you can say, you, know, you don't have to go to jail, we're not, we're not gonna, for all the reasons, or some of the reasons that your friend, Mr. Ian, just went over, that's, that's true, but at some point, uh, uh, the uh, integrity of the suspended sentence is uh, rendered meaningless unless there's some consequences for, for future misconduct. So the sentence on the motion to impose is 30 days to serve, I'll have to get back to this in a second. criminal trespass charge, the state's recommended a fully suspended sentence. Sorry, I'm contempt charge. Sorry, contempt charge. Um, the court is uh, convinced that this, this also requires um, a sentence. I'm just, 12 months in the House of Corrections with 11 suspended for two years on your good behavior. Again, good behavior means no felonies, misdemeanors, or major motor vehicle violations, and then be 30 days to serve consecutive to this sentence. Irrespective of, what, of the constitutionality questions that were raised, the point is that there were some orders in place and the violations of those orders were, 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 were late. No, and I don't buy the argument that uh, the behavior wasn't, uh, didn't have a threatening component to it. Now, uh, there's a bit of a procedural issue we have to deal with because of the motion to impose, there's no appeal from this court from that. Uh, so that would have to be served unless you were able to convince the Supreme Court to hear this uh, and make an order, but otherwise that would be a stand committed sentence. You can't appeal to the Superior Court for a jury trial on the, on the contempt charge that we just tried. Your Honor, and I would just actually add that I filed a motion to hold it as a the contempt trial as a bench trial, so he's not entitled to a jury trial if the court sentences him uh, to no more than six months. Well, sentence him to 12 months. Right, okay. So I just, so I think it was granted, that motion was granted. I understand the so point. Well, is it your position that the court was bound? to sentence him to six months or less by virtue of that motion? Yes. And what's your position on that legal? On the, uh, the appeal? Well, on the legal point, in other words, uh, I didn't see if there was a motion apparently in the other case to, uh, like on the contempt charge, the state filed a motion here that I didn't, didn't uh, pick up on that said that they were not going to seek anything more than six months. And when they do that, that essentially means that, uh, whereas if it was a straightforward class A misdemeanor and he was sentenced, uh, irrespective of the sentence, you could appeal to the Superior Court for a jury trial. On a contempt charge, it's in a little different category. And you don't get a jury trial. So I had, I had to, because of the state's motion, I had to amend the sentence. I just rendered it down to six months with five suspended and 30 days to serve. So the, the issue here is when he would begin to serve these two sentences. We need some time to talk to him about when he would begin.
classes can be as the consecutive sentences so 60 days is good time you can get. Did you, did you have any preacher out the final discharge? Time of day you want to appear? Noon? Very sorry. <coughs> well, I think 30 days is probably too long to give it to Tuesday, July 1st at noon. July 1st. 